Hai Cari. Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. So it is the first week of March and I have already finished a book and I have not told you about it. So it is Tuesday and you can see a little wriggle bum next to me because I am puppy sitting today. He's a little bit sleepy, but we're good, are we telly? <laughs> good boy. So yes, I've already finished one book this month and that was oh what was it called charlie what is it oh beneath the sugar sky by shauna mcguire which is the third wayward children's series book and yeah i really am loving this series i'm listening to them over on script and having a really great time i didn't think i was going to like them but i am absolutely adoring them so yeah i've already finished one on monday because they're four hours long and i listened on to i listened to them on two times speed so yeah it took me two hours to get through the first one i'm probably going to finish another one today because why not and yeah um but i am puppy sitting today and i jelly yes so we'll be going out for walks and I've probably put some clips in here for you to see because he's such a good boy and yeah <laughs> Maggie's not best pleased about Charlie being here but you know she can get over it for a day because he's such a good boy um but yeah he's my sister's dog they're working a lot at the moment they've asked if I could take him for a day just to give them a break and of course I can because look at this little wriggle look at him You right? Where are you going? <laughs> He's very good. He's very good. So yeah, um, trying to think if I've got any other updates for you. Uh, probably not. It's my first week of reading since the Woody's Roundup readathon. And honestly, I think I'm going to read a lot more now because I'm not going to have to try and follow a TBR. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I have plans for this week, but I'm not sure what I'm going to really do. I ideally need to get through actual age Eve Brown this week so I can upload a um, <laughs> a review next week in time for publication day and I'm buddy reading that with Livy. Um, I'm also restarting um, my buddy read with Ben of Crescent City by Sarah J Maas so that's going to be happening at some point. I'm going to try and get through as many of the Wayward Children's books as I can that Scribs allows me to, so fingers crossed I'll be able to get through the whole series without Scribd banning me from them, but I doubt it. So yeah, I'm going to try and read as many Wayward Children series books as I can, and what else am I going to read? I don't know, I'm feeling very positive about this reading week to be honest with you. Um, I have a lot of books that I need to read, and I'm really really wanting to get to the house in the Cerulean Sea. You off Charlie? Bye! So yeah, I need to I need to read The House in the Cerulean Sea because I really, really want to. And I get the feeling it's going to give me similar vibes to the Wayward Children series because they're kind of like middle grades, but not middle grades. They're actually young adults, but they're so whimsical. And I keep hearing people say that The House in the Cerulean Sea is really whimsical. So yeah, hopefully I can get that read this week, but I don't know. I'm going to play it by ear, do what I can. And yeah, it's going to be a good week, I think. I'm feeling more positive this week, feeling more on top of things. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't see my last weekly reading vlog I actually did a bit of a rejig of my bedroom which is where my office usually is so I've got the fish tank ready for when the fish arrive this weekend and I've also I've taken the drawer out of my desk and taken the cupboard door off to make it more spacious and open and I'm using baskets to kind of make those shelves in my cupboard into drawers so and it's made a massive improvement. I'm really, really happy. I'm gonna have some lunch, then we're gonna go out for a walk because Charlie needs three walks a day. And that's pretty much all I've got planned for at the moment. Wednesday and I have read I'm trying to think what I had read last time I spoke to you well 
to give you an update i have finished all of the currently out full length books in the wayward children series um i listed them all over on script sorry if you can hear crackling that's my fireplace playing i shall be stop that alexa pause my fire stick so yes i finished all of the books in the wayward children series that are out now and i think they were all at least four stars so that is pretty awesome i don't really want to summarize any of them because I feel like even though technically you could probably read some of them independently of each other, they do have links and they do spoil each other to various extents. So yeah, I think the latest one across the gra gr green grass fields, I think it's called, um, that one I've just read and this one I can actually talk to you about because it doesn't link to the other ones in the series so far like as far as I'm aware I don't recognize the main character and basically this one's like horse girl goes to horse land <laughs> so if you didn't know the wayward children series is where children go through these portals or doors into kind of their perfect world and they're always kids who are on the fringe or have been rejected so usually lgbt kids uh sometimes fat kids sometimes kids who aren't loved by their parents and basically this girl is horse obsessed and she doesn't really have good friendships going on and something happens at school so she storms away finds this door in the woods and when she goes through she finds herself in this world full of centaurs and the centaurs herd unicorns. She's told when she enters this world that whenever humans appear, which is very rare, they're usually there to save the world from something. She thinks that that's kind of a lot of pressure and says she doesn't want to go and do that yet. So she wants to live her life a little bit in this horsey land. And that's basically what the story is. And it was a good story. It was just very horse girl. <laughs> like, you know, I imagine this is the kind of book for people who grew up reading the horse girl books as like a young kid or like an early teenager and it just was too too horsey for me like it was okay it was great I still enjoyed it I still liked the the story behind it but yeah the horse girl stuff was a bit much for me so it only got four stars that's the only one I think I want to talk about too much because the other ones are all spoilers <laughs> so that's definitely been my least favourite so far, but it's still a four star read. I think the first three I gave five stars and the next three I gave four stars. So yeah, they're going really well and I'm really, really looking forward to them. Just really sad that they only seem to come out once a year. <laughs> so yeah, looking forward to the next one. Uh, Maggie, don't eat my brownies. I just baked them. I'm on trouble. Speaking of, let me show you my brownies. I've baked some brownies because I'm going to send them down to my parents and my grandparents back home. Stop shouting, Maggie. And yeah, they're just calling now so that I can cut them up and figure out somewhere to put them so that I can post them. So what am I reading now? I am listening to This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher on Scribd as an audiobook right now. I just wanted something kind of quick and not too high level to have to listen to so I thought this would be quite an easy read and basically from what I understand I didn't really read the blurb before I listened to this one I picked it because I have a physical copy and I want to clear out some of my physical TBR by listening to them on audiobooks but what I understand about what this one's about is something happened the previous winter I think and someone died at a party and now five of the people who were there when this happened have now been invited to this event and they're told that they will win a scholarship if they um, solve this murder mystery at this exclusive event and they've all been chosen because they're amazing people but when they get there they find out uh maggie stop every time i try to film an update in the evening she becomes chaotic maggie stop it don't talk back so <laughs> they when they get there they find out that it's not all what it seems and it's very sinister and it's been made by someone who is stalking them maggie i will get you i'll get you but yeah so it's all a bit sinister and i'm actually 
enjoying it so far it's got an average rating of 3.2 on goodreads so i was a bit worried maggie come on now off there thank you so yeah it's got an average of 3.2 on goodreads which makes me a bit concerned and people were saying that the first half is better than the second half and it all kind of loses it but i haven't got that far yet i'm about a third of the way in on the audiobook and i'm still enjoying it i don't see any issues with it yet so fingers crossed it will stay good for me and i won't lose the love for it by the end but we'll have to see physical i am reading Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. So yeah, I am currently reading that and I'm really enjoying it. It's really funny and it is an autistic, autistic romance. So both the love interests and the main character are autistic. So cool. Can you stop? I've already told you no. Thank you. So yeah, that's my current main physical read, but I'm also buddy reading Crescent City and I'm also needing to catch up on the Thursday Murder Club because Works Book Club has been revived and I still haven't read the, the February book, so. It's, it's going okay, I'm in a good mood. I'm feeling on top of things again. So yeah, that's what I have to update you on today. Hello, so it is now Thursday and just thought I'd quickly drop in because I've had some book mail and I thought I would show you it. I have opened it but I haven't looked inside. It is the February book for Illuma Crate which will be my last Illuma Crate book. I have cancelled my subscription for now and I might restart in the future but I don't see it soon. But yeah this is my February book. I think I know what it is because I do look at spoiler accounts but if you haven't really received yours then look away now. I'm just about to get my pyjamas on and go to bed because I'm really tired at the moment so I thought an early night would do me some good. So before I go to bed I thought I would talk to you about the book that I read today because I did finish another book today. Um, I think I told you yesterday that I'd started This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher and I finished that this afternoon I think? No I finished it just before lunch. Uh, so I listened to that audiobook over on Scribd. I do have a physical copy but I listen to the whole thing on audiobook. At the moment I'm doing a lot of work that doesn't require me to use like enough focus that I can't listen to things so I tend to listen to audiobooks while I'm working at the moment a lot which is why I'm getting through so many. So yeah I finished this I Will Kill You which is my fifth book of the week if you can believe that. All of them have been audiobooks. But yes so I finished this I Will Kill You and I gave it three stars. I think I know I said earlier on about the reviews saying how the first half was really good and then you kind of lose in the second half and they're absolutely right like I was really into it in the first half and I liked the route it was taking and then it really does just lose all sense and like direction in the second half it just was very poorly explained kind of devolves and I don't know I just really was not a fan I thought that the characterization was very weak a lot of the characters for me blended into one like especially the male characters like Gavin and Brett I really struggled to remember the difference between them so yeah it, it just wasn't it wasn't great it started off really well but it wasn't great it's one of those books that I was reading it thinking like if more work had gone into this this could have been a much better book but unfortunately it just 
yeah, it just didn't do it for me. And I gave it three stars because I thought the first half was pretty good. My Scribd membership for my original account is coming to an end. So I am trying to listen to as many audiobooks as I can get out of Scribd before I cancel or, but I've already canceled that membership. And so um, I am now listening to Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, which is an adult romance and it's a queer romance it's male male romance and I'm loving it <laughs> it's really fun it's got red white and royal blue vibes it's not as good as red white and royal blue because that's like top tier romance novel but it's pretty good so this one is about oh god what's his name Luke spelt l-u-c and Luke's father is a rock star or like a aging rock star he's kind of know more to be a drug addict now and he's never met him because his father walked out on him and his mum when he was young but basically he works for a charity and he's been getting in the tabloids a lot lately for drunken nights out going wrong and they're not very happy with him and they tell him that he needs to clean up his reputation or he's going to be fired so his colleague suggests that he gets a fake boyfriend who gets him some positive publicity so that's what he does and he ends up fake dating the lovely oh my god what's his name oh, this is what happens when i'm just listening to it not reading it oh my god i've literally been listening to it all day and i can't remember his name but anyway he ends up dating someone he is a barrister and he's basically a criminal defense lawyer in the uk so yeah they start fake dating to try and cover up because this guy feels like he's been out of a relationship for a while and would like a new one and obviously Luke needs this positive publicity so yeah it's another fake dating romance and I'm really enjoying it it's so much fun it's really funny and it's got a lot of heart to it so yeah I'm really enjoying it and I will let you know how it's going I'm probably gonna finish it tomorrow so also I have been reading get a life no no not get a life cobra actual age Eve Brown so I have now got to the end of chapter seven so it's about a third of the way through and this book is so much fun I've really been enjoying it it's so funny and I love a good autistic autistic romance although Eve hasn't been like stated to be autistic yet so I'm not sure if that's coming or not but yeah it's really fun highly recommend it when it comes out yeah that's, that's all I can say I'm, I'm really enjoying it fishies are here fishies are here it is friday and the fishies are here and we're trying to make sure maggie doesn't eat them <laughs> so let me introduce you to our fishy pals over in this oh no <laughs> this bag we have some neon tetras they're like little shiny fish and we've also got some snails so these are the ones that we're having from tom's brother because his tank went awry this one they're like I think he said they're like panda corridors. I don't know. They're black and white and they're really cute. So I will give you a better look once they've acclimatized. At the moment, they've just got to sit in their bags to get used to it and then we'll be able to let them out soon. Sunday so I haven't updated in a couple of days but I have quite a lot to update you on so I think when I last updated was Thursday or Friday and at that point I was still reading actual AG Brown and a few others so I have read this week seven books from start to finish which is just I am mind blown. Now, yes, some of them were significantly shorter than my usual books because I was reading the Wayward Children series, but they're still like 200 pages, which is still a pretty solid book, so don't come for me here. I think I read three Wayward Children series books because I read Beneath the Sugar Sky and then the next two. <laughs> don't ask me what they are because I don't remember. But yes, I listened to those three. And then I listened to This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher. Then I listened 
do I think I then went on to boyfriend material which I finished this morning and oh my goodness I absolutely loved it so if you're a fan of red white and royal blue this is one for you because it is really really good if you're looking for super explicit set scenes this, is, this isn't it but it is really good it's such a funny and sweet romance i really really loved it it's not quite as like top tier as red white and royal blue for me it did lose like one star because i just found it a little bit lacking in comparison to red white and royal blue but it just oh, it's so good so funny so sweet absolutely charming i loved the romance i love the way it developed i love a good fake dating plot this one is a bit slow burny compared to other ones but it still had a good amount of like romantic moments so yeah really love that one that was awesome i've also finished actual age eve brown which is another adult romance and oh, it just if i haven't summarized it yet actual age eve brown it's about Eve Brown, who is a bit of a chaotic mess, and her parents basically tell her that they're cutting her off, and she needs to basically get a job, sort herself out, and then they will help her again. So she goes off and off, <laughs> goes off driving, and she comes across this little B&B, &B, and she's stopping there because she wants some food, but she doesn't realise it's a B&B, &B, so um, there's, they're not serving food because it's not breakfast. But she sees that they are interviewing for a new chef, so she decides on the spur of the moment to go and walk into an interview. And basically, the interview doesn't go great because she's a bit of a chaotic mess. So she storms off, but then the interviewers decide actually they want to hire her because they think she could have the right energy. And they go out to try and find her, but it's raining really heavily, and because of the rain, Eve doesn't see the owner of the B&B &B behind her car and knocks him over. Um, basically, because he is injured, she decides that she should stay and help him run the B&B &B because she's the one who put him out of action. So yeah, I absolutely adored this one. It's my first Brown Sisters book, my first Talia Hibbert book, and it was just so funny, so cute, and so sexy like i know people say that tyler hibbert's books are really really sexy if you're gonna go into this please make sure you're like capable and willing to read some really graphic sex scenes the romance was so good it was an autistic autistic romance and i loved them both yeah yeah it was just oh I loved it, I really did. I thought it was so funny and so perfect. I loved the way the romance developed. I loved the characters, they were so relatable because I'm also autistic. So yeah, it just, another great book. I've had such an awesome reading week, honestly. Did I read anything else that I forgot to tell you about? <laughs> Probably, because I read so many books. But yeah, I'm having a great time. I'm so glad that I got to finish those books. I say, so I love them so much. I am in such an adult romance mood right, mood right now, so my Scribd subscription just renewed like right a few minutes ago, so you can catch me reading all of the adult romances next week on Scribd and running out of books on Scribd because <laughs> it's going to block me so fast. But I'm also, uh, what have I started listening to? I Love You So Mochi, or Mochi, I can't remember how to pronounce Mochi. But yeah, I Love You So Muchy, uh, which is a young adult romance, and it's a story about a girl called Kimi, or Kimoko, who is living in America. She is Japanese-American, and both of her parents are Japanese, but her father's Japanese-American and is fourth generation, but her mother is first generation Japanese-American. Basically, she has always told her mother, who is an artist, that she also loved art and thought art was her calling, and was going to go to college to do art, but she has had second thoughts. So she has dropped her art course without telling her mum at high school. And when they find out, they freak out. But conveniently, at the same time, her estranged grandparents have sent her a letter, including some plane tickets, to come and visit them over in Japan. So she decides to take them up on their offer and go to Japan and see if being there can help her to A, feel more connected to her family, but also B, to see if she can figure out what she really wants to do. And while she's there, she meets a teenage boy who is an aspiring medical student but it's also moonlighting as a 
mochi like a like <laughs> okay, he, he wears a mochi costume <laughs> to help advertise his uncle's mochi stall so yeah it's really cute so far really funny I think I'm like three quarters of the way through and yeah it's very wholesome very sweet and the writing the description is just incredible like oh it's just making me want to go to Japan even more because it sounds absolutely beautiful yeah yeah, another great read. I'm probably going to finish it tomorrow because it is just awesome and I am loving it. I'm just having a grand old reading time. <laughs> but in other news, our fish tank is going okay. We've had to order a bubbler because there's not enough oxygen in the tank, unfortunately. And also we think Maggie has eaten one of the snails. But everything else is fine. That's going okay. In grown-up news, my car went for an MOT on Friday. And it's now nine years old and it's starting to get some advisories that are expensive to fix so i have made the grown-up executive decision to buy a new car and i paid the deposit this morning <laughs> for my new car and we're probably going to be picking up next weekend and oh i feel like such a grown-up and i hate it like i have my own personal debt now that's not student debt <laughs> terrifying but it's kind of exciting at the same time I feel very grown up I did a lot of research into what cars I wanted to look at and I found a really really amazing car so I'm very very happy with that I can't wait to go and get my new car but also I'm really sad to be saying goodbye to my V8 500 like it's so dinky and it's so nippy so fast and it's got a really good boot for a small car but it just isn't big enough now that I'm a proper grown-up and I need to you know buy Ikea furniture and can't even get like a broom in the back of my car so yeah bye bye Fiat 500 but hello new car next week so yeah if you want to see me stressing about getting a new car next week keep watching these vlogs <laughs> I don't know you're probably more interested in the books that I'm reading but oh well oh and also my gaming chair has been shipped and that's arriving on tuesday so if you want to see me be very excited about a chair god i'm such a grown-up aren't i <laughs> i got excited this morning because um i turned the heating off at both of my radiators because i only have two because i live in that small of a flat but yeah i turned off both my radiators i haven't turned them on all day and we've been absolutely fine and I felt very happy. I, I, it was such a grown-up thing. I was very happy because I knew I was saving myself money. Being a grown-up is weird. And on that note, <laughs> I am going to wrap up this vlog here and go to bed. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. All of my social media links are down in the description below. If you want to let me know you are here, please leave me, hmm, leave me a fish emoji down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.